Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is the second video in this series uh, where, where we're breaking down all of the released cards or spoiled cards uh, for the new set Amon Ket. If you missed the first video, it's up on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash 72 DPI online. Uh, head over there, give it a watch. Um, and we're going to go the, go through this uh, every day until all of the cards are released. Um, to kind of play catch up though, these were some of the cards that were released uh, prior to the actual reveal season uh, or um, preview season as Wizards calls it. So these cards that we're going to go over today are, are the invocations or the masterpieces of the set. The uh, the fifth rarity, if you will, uh, the chase cards, the super shiny, ultra rare cards. Uh, what you see in front of you, though, is kind of the, um, the uh, I guess the evolution, as we can, as we call it. I guess I, I think that's what we'll call it um, of these masterpiece cards. Uh, as Wizards kind of goes forward with this kind of idea of making this fifth rarity and this kind of, you know, these cards aren't in standard, but this they needed to reprinted, um, kind of this fill that void, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, fan favorites and cards that need reprints and, you know, kind of a theme, kind of like what they did with uh, the Expeditions in uh, Zen uh, the Return to Zendikar or Battle for Zendikar or whatever you want to call it. Um, if there's a you know the, the theme that they had going there with all lands and things of that nature, um, going forward though, I kind of wanted to go over just real briefly the change in border, uh, just because with the, the Amonkhet ones, it was you, you, there's there's two sides to the fence. You're either for them or against them. There's nobody that's eh, they're okay or you know there's no in between you know it's either you hate them or you love them. Um, and it seems to be a lot of hate right now, uh, mainly because the the big thing with these cards was more art. We want to see the art. We want to, you know, it, you know, big, bright, bold colors. Uh, there is a video on, on Wizards' uh, Twitter page uh, kind of showing you what they look like in real life, foiled. Um, they do have, you know, a nice shine to them through, you know, uh, through their, their foiling process. But the big thing here is the art box is so small compared, even compared to a normal magic card. Um, so on the left here, you see we've got Scalding Tarn. This was the their first version of these kind of chase mythic rares where there's, you know, one in every three you know, three boxes that you open is kind of like the rarity that you get them at. Um, so, and then the next set, the middle, your middle card, the Sword of Feast and Famine, this was the one, these are the cards that were in the Kaladesh block. Um, kind of going a little bit further than, you know, it opens up the border a little bit. So you've got a borderless card, but you still have like a frame, right? So the artwork stretches out past the frame and you can kind of see there's some transparency there so that you can, you can still see some of the, you know, some of the actual artwork through the back, through that actual framing. Um, and then also if you look in the two text boxes, there's a little bit of opacity, uh, drop in both of the text boxes to where you can see a little bit of the image carry through more so in the Kaladesh ones. Um, and, uh, then in the battle for Zendikar, I really enjoy that. It kind of gives you a full, you know, a full picture, um, to kind of see what's behind there. The other thing that it does is gives the artist even more to work with as far as releasing their, you know, their original artwork. So, you know, the, the, you know, these are really, you know, you're not going to build a full deck out of these. I mean, someday you might, after they've released, you know, 15 sets of these things, you might be able to make a full deck out of these cards, uh, a working deck. Um, but, you know, the real reason for these is to kind of showcase the artwork and kind of, you know, make reprints when reprints are needed for, you know, cards like Scalding Tarn, even though, you know, these cards are even more rare than the original ones. But giving you an extra an extra way to get these cards, you know, the chase mythics, you know, the lottery tickets, whatever the the you know winning scratch offs, however you want to you know think about it. Now, if you you know switch gears and you look at the Omnicat ones, you know you see like you know the, like I said, the art box is super tiny. Um, the the 
other knock that's going there's two other you know kind of negatives that are going against these cards and it's the you know the the symbol the mana symbols are all you know generic man they're all colorless i guess there's no like you know black for black or red for red you know there's no actual color in there they're all just part of like these chiseled in and, and i guess that kind of goes with the theme so I'm, i appreciate that they went with the theme on that um but i think we could have put a little little bit of color inside of you know that symbol to kind of make it stand out a little bit or maybe put it inside of a box that's you know that colored I, i'm not really sure um I, I would be interested to see the different concepts for these cards and where they started and where and and obviously we know where they finished but you know the the evolution of these in particular because i'm not really that impressed like i just think that they're you know the hieroglyphics is the next thing i want to talk about at the very top and you know the difficult text re uh, to read as far i mean with the one that we have on screen we have dark ritual on screen you know you've got all these hieroglyphics at the top in you know surrounding the word that you know the word is slightly heavier slightly heavier but still difficult to read so and likewise you know down below you you know if you were to look across that middle line where normally the card type is it's not in the same place first off so this you know that's the first thing i think is throwing people off is like there's not it's it's centered versus being you know aligned left so that's the first thing that's throwing people off the second thing that's throwing people off is these you know the font thickness and even the font like i mean look at the eyes and the u i mean they're very it's it's really hard to distinguish what letters are which letters and what letters aren't letters like these like the actual symbols themselves so needless to say uh we're going to go through all the cards here real quick um some of them are much needed reprints some of them are just like oh that's kind of interesting i'm glad they put that in there i guess uh dark ritual being one uh, you know these it's kind of like the ornithopter from last set you know really didn't need more ornithopters but it was one of those really iconic uh cards for the kaladesh you know set and that you know in that um that world so i'm kind of curious i think i'm guessing Black is going to play a major role in uh, this set, and Dark Ritual being one of these cards kind of sets that you know that tone. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, you know, go ahead and leave a comment. You know about the video. What you know? Do you like these frames? Do you like the evolution that you're seeing here between these three sets? What would you like them to see? What would you like to see differently? Um, me personally, I think they you know they hit the nail on the head with the Kaladesh ones. You know, this is a perfect you know the the border is just right you know we're always about more art and we wanted all the art to go bleed over the edge um but i still think to you know to tie them in as a set you know this you know the artwork should be redone obviously but you know i think that i, th I really think kaladesh hit it on the head so do me a favor hit uh hit, hit us up in the comment section tell us what you like about these cards which one's your favorite obviously they've they've posted all of all 25 they're going to be in the set so which ones do you think are going to be re, uh printed in the next set um and then we'll go forward so our first up here is we're going to start with green and oh wait there are no green so that's the next thing uh all the colors were represented except for green uh we'll talk about the there's a multicolored card a gold card that has green in it but there are no mono green cards so really really wizards like no green love here so uh anyway so we'll start we'll we'll skip green or we'll go through green rather quickly and move right into blue uh blue does make up the majority of the uh, masterpiece set here uh we've got uh divert and excuse me guys if i struggle with the the names because of the of the uh hier hieroglyphics but uh, I'll do my best, and I'll you know we'll go through this one at a one at a time. So, uh, divert is one blue. It's an instant. Uh, change the target of target spell with a single target, unless that spell's controller pays two. Um, so one thing that you're going to notice is a 
a lot of counter magic, a lot of bounce, and things of like that of that nature in blue with these sets. So I'm not sure if they're trying to tell us something like, uh, hey, blue and black are going to be a thing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so spell pierce is the next card. One blue instant speed counter target non creature spell unless its controller plays to pace two colorless mana. Uh, again, another great counter spell. Um, great for those early, uh, you know, on the play, um, counter magic. Next up we have Stifle, and this is another one that's super hard to read. Uh, Stifle is a great card from, uh, I can't remember, um, I think, uh, Scourge, I believe it was Scourge. Um, one blue counter target activated or triggered ability. This is at instant speed, obviously. Um, but, uh, another great card, Days. All the way back from, uh, I believe, n uh, Nemesis. Yeah, I think Nemesis. That was right about the same time I stopped playing or took a break from Magic. Uh, but yeah, another awesome card. One blue, one colorless, or generic. Instant speed. You may return an island to your uh, you control to its owner ha owner's hand rather than paying Daze's mana cost. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one. Uh, another great, great counter spell. Uh, especially for those early turns, you know, on the play, uh, bouncing your own uh, island back to your hand. Uh, great, great to play. Uh, let's see here. Next up, we've got Force of Will, which is, again, no one will ever cast this for blue, blue, three generic, uh, but that's its converted mana cost uh, of five at instant speed. You may pay one life uh, and exile a blue card from your hand rather than paying Force of Will's mana cost counter target spell so you can pitch card and cast this for free and counter spell um obviously on the on the draw this is the go-to counter spell of choice uh for those turn one counter spells uh definitely the chase rare chase mythic mythic or chase masterpiece whatever you want to call it uh cryptic commands up next uh three blue and one generic instant choose two counter target spell uh or return target permanent to its owner's hand or tap all creatures your opponent's control or draw a card you get to pick two of those uh cryptic commands another great card uh played in definitely in uh most blue modern decks uh but uh, great control magic uh and also uh gets you drawing cards which is awesome uh next up past of ne uh, excuse me pact see pact of negation uh instant speed for zero mana Counter target spell, and then at the beginning of your next upkeep, pay three generic, two blue. If you don't, you lose the game. Uh, Pact of Negation is a great card, uh, just great counter magic, uh, especially late game. Uh, you can go ahead and tap out and you know present a, a win uh, opening, a win opening for your opponent, and have a, a pact uh, in your hand. Uh, next one, Consecrated Sphinx. Yes, that's that's what that says. Um, Kind of an odd inclusion, but again, kind of goes along with the theme. I'm assuming with like dark ritual and stuff like that. Four generic white, or excuse me, four generic blue blue. Uh, it's a creature sphinx with flying four six. This is the, another thing. This is our first creature. Look how they did the attack and defense, uh, or um, uh, power and toughness numbers. They're like it's like a fraction. Like it's really strange. <laughs> I don't know. It's really really odd. They're vertical like that. But anyway, it's a flying, and whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. So blue is all about the counter magic and drawing cards, apparently. So uh, let's see here. Next, we've got counter spell, just flat out counter spell. Awesome card. Uh, blue, blue, and probably the easiest text you'll ever have on a, on a magic card, besides draw a card, is counter target spell. Uh, counterbalance is uh, two blue. This is going way back, and they've you know they've changed this around quite a bit. This text, uh, so it's an enchantment. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may reveal the top card of your library. If you do, counter that spell if it has the same converted mana cost as the revealed card. Um, yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have white containment priest. Uh, one blue, or excuse me, we're off blue. Now we're on to white. <laughs> one white, one generic uh, creature. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two with flash. If a non-token creature 
would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. So this is a great control card, uh, making sure everyone's playing fair, not cheating creatures out early. Uh, for, you know, 2-2 two, two for 2 is awesome, especially uh, with Flash, you can interrupt uh, some of your... Uh, Combo players and really kind of set them apart. Uh, next up, we have uh, Austria Command. Austria Command? See what I mean? Like, these cards are just so hard to read. Um, at least that font. I mean, that font is just something else. Uh, it's a sorcery, another command. Uh, it's the, this is the white version. Uh, you get uh, to choose to destroy all artifacts or and or destroy all enchantments. Destroy all creatures with a converted mana cost 3 or less. Or you can wipe the board and destroy all creatures with a converted mana cost 4 or less. Or 4 or greater, excuse me. So, um, depending on your board state, obviously uh, white usually, you know, white is a great white weenies card. Um, it's great in commander. Uh, it's just nice because, you know, for uh, you've got a Wrath of God for, for 4 mana, right? That destroys all creatures. This has got a little bit of variable... Uh, you know modules that you can actually pick and choose so based on the board state if you know if you're being overrun by little creatures obviously you're going to lose your board in a you know white weenie kind of deck um, but you know at the end of the day you can destroy everything or maybe you need to get rid of some artifacts and the higher creatures it doesn't matter it's a great card um, to be included in this set um, artworks a little generic for my taste um, but uh, probably it's probably the one that I, I least like the the most. So we'll uh, move on. Uh, continuing in white, uh, loyal retainers. It's uh, two generic and one white for a creature. Sacrifice loyal retainers. Return target cre excuse me. Return target legendary creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only during your turn before attackers are declared. So. Eh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 3 that, you know, fetches you up your legendary creatures, so that's not too shabby. It's a great way to kind of cheat creatures in, um, especially, you know, on turn 3. This you know, And the thing is, this can be done immediately. So if you're in, you know, black-white deck where you're discarding your, your biggest thing to your graveyard, this will, you know, turn 3, you drop this and then put your, uh, you know, your grizzle brand on a, into play, and you know you're off to the races. Uh, next up is worship. This is a great card. Uh, this takes me back to when I was really big into magic, um, and Urza Saga, and it, just one of those cards where you read it and you're like, really? I can't lose the game? Like, this is amazing. Uh, so it's uh, one white and three generic for an enchantment. If you control a creature, damage that... Yeah, if you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. Effectively, you can't lose the game via damage. Obviously, you can still get poisoned to death. Uh, you can still get decked um, and things like that. Uh, but... This is one one way to kind of turn off the the uh, the the ways to lose the game. Um, obviously, you need a creature in play to make this all work, but at the end of the day, that's you know not a hard feat to to achieve. Uh, also, up in white, we have uh, even mind sensor. This is a reprint. Uh, we talked about this uh, a few a few uh, last episode. Uh, it's one white and two generic for a creature with flash and flying. If any opponent, or if an opponent, excuse me, would search a library, a library, so any library, that player searches the top four cards instead. So, uh, mostly in played in modern to stop those uh, um, fetch lands. It's a two one body with flash and flying, so it's not you know. Um, it's uh it's not really meant for combat. You know, it's a it's uh it's kind of a chump blocker if you need a chump block. Obviously, it's probably going to catch somebody off guard the first time, but the second, third time they're not they're probably not going to do it. You know, they're not going to run into that. They're going to try and remove your uh your bird wizard, but uh nevertheless, uh, it's a great card. The artwork is excellent. Really enjoy the artwork. Uh next up, we've got there it is, the Wrath of God, sorcery speed. Uh, destroy all creatures that they cannot be regenerated for two white and two generic. So definitely an excellent card. Um, kind of takes you back to when magic was uh, um, 
you know, first finding its feet and, you know, Wrath of God being this, you know, I can just, I remember the, the original artwork and it was just, it was one of those iconic artwork, you know, pieces of art that just like, just kind of sticks with you. And, um, you know, not to say that this art is terrible or anything like that, but the original artwork really kind of set, set the tone for me for magic, um, and really kind of has stayed with me ever since, you know, really, you know, it's just one of those pieces of art that you can know constantly, you will always be able to recognize and you'll always know where it's from. Um, but this kind of, this card, the artwork actually reminds me of, um, uh, what was the blue card from Return to Ravnica? Uh, the Rift card, Cyclonic Rift. There you go. This kind of reminds me of Cyclonic Rift uh, a little bit. So uh, as far as artwork goes, just more of an Egyptian theme obviously makes sense. Uh, next up, we've got Black Entomb. Uh, one black, search your library for a card and put that card on top or into your graveyard and then shuffle your library. Um, an awesome card. I use it quite a bit. Instant speed, get something in your graveyard. Um, you know, works really great with, uh, you know, um, anything, you know, the, uh, um, anything that's bringing stuff back from your graveyard, um, especially early on. Um, so... Uh, loyal, like, excuse, like, aforementioned loyal retainers. Uh, diab diabolic, diabolic, whew, diabolic intent. There we go. Sorcery for one black, one generic. Uh, in addition to cost, uh, cast, um, uh, diabolic, you gotta sacrifice a creature. Now you can search your library. The actual ability of the card is, uh, search your library for a card and put it into your hand, shuffle your library. So, just a great search engine. Next up, we've got Mind Twist, and this is of you know an old card as well. Um, again, just kind of one of those cards that takes me back to when I was playing Magic. One black, X, uh, target player discards X cards at random. Just the good old fashioned discard card, you know. Uh, at you don't see at random very much anymore, especially with an X in front of it. Um, but sorcery speed, excellent removal. Um, just an all-around great card. Can really disrupt some uh, opening hands. Uh, and then we talked about Dark Ritual. Uh, instant speed, pay one black, add three black mana to your mana pool. Just uh awesome combo piece, great in Legacy. Just something that's uh, always going to be around. Last up in, ba in black, we have Attrition. Uh, black, black, and one generic enchantment. You can pay a black, sacrifice a creature, destroy a target non-black creature. So, it's black removal at its best. Uh, moving on to red. Red got two cards. Aggravated Assault for one uh, one red, two generic enchantment. And it is, uh, the ability is three red red. And then you can, that untaps all creatures you control after this main phase there is there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So obviously you can get an extra attack in there, which is nice. It's a great card, kind of good for commander. It's a great way to kind of get a couple extra attack steps in there. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Chain Lightning is next. One red sorcery. Chain Lightning deals three damage to target creature or player. Then that player... Um, uh, then that player or that creature's controller may pay red red if that player does he or she may copy this spell and may choose a new target for that copy so that's chain lightning uh, we got a couple gold cards uh, in here let's see here we've got uh, vindicate this is a great removal spell uh, all around just just a great card um, one step up from terminate uh, black white one generic you can destroy target permanent probably the third best three you know easy easy to read kind of like counter spell uh, and draw a card just destroy target permanent anything you want just blow it up uh, maelstrom pulse is next uh, green black and one generic destroy target non land permanent and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent. So, 
slightly different color variation, just pick something, destroy it, destroy everything else. Both are sorcery speed, so great cards, great uh, iconic magic cards. Um, that Maelstrom Pulse, uh, that Maelstrom Pulse art is just amazing. I mean, even Vindicate is really, it's just, it's fantastic. And I wish we had, you know, more art, more space for the artwork to kind of stretch out, but whatevs. All right, guys. Well, that is our episode for today. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this uh, episode, leave a comment. Tell me, tell us what you guys think about these uh, masterpieces. What you'd like to see. What you're kind of disappointed with. What you, you know, what you're happy with. Maybe you are happy with the the size of the art box and things like that. I want to hear from everybody. So uh, let's hear it and uh, leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got some new podcasts coming up uh, this week along with all the uh, spoilers and uh, previews as they come out each day. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.